progress. Good morning, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> As we continue in this study, shall we seek the Lord and ask for his guidance so that we may see more of what he would have us to understand from these words in this chapter. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you for this opportunity to open your word, to learn from it, to see that which has gone before that is occurring now within this period of this earth's history. Help us now, Father, guide us so that that which we look upon, we may understand, that we may take it to heart, that we may be guided in that which you would have us to see so that we may more properly present your final warning to this earth and to your people. For this, Father, we thank you. For this, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So, When we left off yesterday, a question had been asked. Are these verses showing us a progression within the history that we have experienced within this movement? Has there been further investigation of that question? I've thought about it. Okay. But the answer would be no. Um, no, specifically to what? That, that uh, whether I've investigated it further? Yes, correct. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't um, okay. tried to, to, I've just thought about it a bit. I've been working on my other paper, so. Okay. So at this point, when we're looking at this, if we're going to make this application, then is, is Judges 2.11 a representation of 2011 within this movement? And the way that the verse reads, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Yeah, so the thing that we could do, um, and, and why I thought this, so if we go back to Judges chapter 1. Okay. Um, or no, chapter 2, verse 1, pardon me. Okay. Um, so we, when we're looking at these verses, if I took Judges 2, 1 as 2001. All right. So what, what would we see that that verse is describing? revelation of or an unfolding of what had gone before within the the first and second angels messages well you have the angel of the lord so that's the angel of revelation 18 christ right coming from gilgal to the weepers and All it right. is not really what happened at 9 11. That's an interesting application. And is it a, a sort of a, a reminder of the covenant? I think it is definitely a reminder of the covenant. Yeah, so that's what's happening here. And God's promised that he will not break that covenant. Now, now I say, you know, that each of these represent these years. I mean, some of this would be rather subjective or maybe even people might consider arbitrary. But we can see that if we took these as the years, um, you know, you would say, well, in 
2002, 2003, 2004, you could have take each of these verses and make them one of the years in the year 2000, right? So that's kind of the, the idea that I had yesterday. Okay, but, but if we were to continue from there, Judges 2, 5 as 2005. Yeah. 2005 being the year that the 2520 really came back into our collective consciences. Right. So in this, the application, I think, is, is as valid as what you were having with verse one of this chapter. Right. And, and we can see that from September 11th, there was this unfolding of this message. So, I mean, to try to take each of these verses and say, well, that's this year, that's what happened. But, you know, talking about throwing down their altars, there's this change that's happening in this message in 2002, 2003, 2004, that's going to lead to the understanding of the 2520 in 2005. Right. So so, I mean, we could at least apply apply it in that way. And then you're going to have. Um, uh, so so when we have the death of Joshua being mentioned here. Um, there is a change that happens in the movement. Um, at this time, and that is we start to have more people bringing light to the movement at that time. Would you agree with that? The Jeff isn't now in, you know, after the 2520 is brought into the movement, you're going to have other people being brought in who are start going to be bringing light to the movement. There's going to be, there's going to be other light that's going to be coming in. There's also going to be some discussion to address specific other points i mean just as <clears throat> as we saw with the book of joel there were some issues that had occurred where you have those that chose to set aside the use of salt you know the bible alone and they mm -hmm. went to a lot of old commentaries to, to come up with their, their premise as to what was occurring within the book of Joel. Yeah. So is that also not like the, the situation where the nation chooses to set aside it's worship solely of God. Right. So, so we see in 2010, <laughs> we often talk about this, this disagreement over Joel. Um, and we, we will put it at like 2013, maybe 2012, but really it's 2010, right? And it says also that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And these are these groups. So in 2010, <clears throat> we have the Oklahoma camp meeting. And, and there, all of these different ministries were brought together. So um, uh, Merritt, Merritt Hurst, he's the one who organized and paid for that. So that was at the, the Health Centers of America or whatever the thing was called. Um, so it's kind of a luxury hotel out in the country. And um, so it was a pretty large camp meeting. It brought together all these different groups. And um, the, the division was already fairly evident, even to someone like me, who was there seeing this for the first time, being just acquainted with the message. So you had um, the different groups were trying to, basically they were vying for attention. Um, and Jeff seemed a little bit unaware of it, um, but, but he knew about it. He had given all of these different groups, uh, 
they, they wanted to present, it was the prophetic chain, and he wanted them all to present on the same topic. But not everybody really followed what he had asked them to do. Um, and there was a little bit of an attitude being shown by some of the speakers, Carrasco especially, or if that's how you say his name. Um, uh, but there definitely was this underlying dissatisfaction with Jeff at that time. And, and, and Merritt, he, he expressed this to me. So he <clears throat> invited me uh, to be there and paid for my flight and everything. So, um, so 2010 could be marked by Judges 210. And then uh, verse 11, that would be this, what's happening here from verse 11 uh, to 13. And, and even verse 12, that's 2012, that's Parminder. It brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, the gods that were around about them. So, and bowed, bowed, bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And verse 13, they forsake the Lord, serve Baal and Ashtoreth. And then in 2014, that's when we have this split, and that would be the spoilers, right? Okay. Delivers them into the hand of the spoilers that spoiled them. And these would be all these different groups. So so that happens in 2014. Um, so... So, I mean, to, to, to be as specific that each of these years, we could take each of these verses specifically and apply it to that year, that's maybe a little too detailed. But it's definitely laying out what's happening. And then in verse 16, it says, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hands of those that spoiled them. So in 2016, um, this would be what happened in 2016 regarding uh, this message, especially as it relates to the understanding of Ezekiel and chronology that's now being accepted. Right? So it's starting to be accepted in this message. Um, and then 2017 says, yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went whoring after other gods. So this is what happened when we had this reorganization. And um, so there's this opposition that then comes against this message specifically regarding uh, Ezekiel and uh, the understanding of Samuel Snow's letters and so forth. None of this is then accepted. And then in 18, the Lord raised up them up judges. Then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For they repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed and vexed them. So this would be 2018 addressing um, what happened with uh, the message of November 9th and July 18th in the correct way of November 9th, uh, Tess's way. And then... It came to pass when the judge was dead. Well, this is what they said about Jeff in 2019. He's going to um, retire. And they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers. So wouldn't this describe what happened in Germany? Easily. Yes. But it's also another point in following other gods to serve them. Yeah. And bow down to them. Yeah. And then and then the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So this is now Jeff again presenting this this message of July 18th. Um and uh so so there's a judgment there, but also the failure of the July 18th prediction. So this is also God's anger against us. Right. And in 2021, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. So we still have this in our midst in 2021. Right? And then 2022, which is this year, that through them I may provoke Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. So this is where we are at. 
And then it says, therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So uh, this would indicate that up to 2023, we're still going to have this issue within this message. But it's not going to be resolved yet. That's, so that's just a suggestion. I'm not saying that it's correct. Um, but it's giving us message uh, information. If it, if it is correct, if it's just an application or something, it at least tells us something about where we are at. That, the, that God's going to leave those nations. Those things are still going to be here. And, and the question is, why? Why is it not resolved by 2023? Now, there is no 24 and onwards, but doesn't mean that's the end of time or anything. It's just that's what's being given to us at this time. I don't know. So what, whatever people think about it, um, I don't know. People might have to think about it more. In this situation, when we're looking at this in this picture, we have very much an overview of what we're going to see through the balance of the book of Judges. Mm -hmm. Now, we had addressed several weeks ago that from Joshua, or excuse me, from Judges 17 to the close of the, of the book, that that portion should have been placed some, somewhere soon after this portion of the book of Judges. Right. So, so we can see 17 to 21. I think that's kind of where it is, isn't it? Right? 17 to 21? Well, um, chapter 17 to 21, starting with there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. That's all going to be events that were earlier. Right. Right. Because you're going to have uh, the section dealing with Samson and Delilah for Samson. That's going to be basically the end of the period of the judges, according to the book of Judges. And then and then they reiterate this earlier history. And 2017 uh, to 2021 is um, basically the time of the understanding of July 18th. Right. Right. So, so, so we could even take just at least those chapters uh, relating to uh, 2017 to 2021, just like we did with the verses in chapter two. But... But, you know, that's just uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm just saying that it represents that history, whether they represent the actual years or not. So that's just another way of looking at it. Would that would that be a, a parallel to the Millerite time? Would it be a parallel to the time that followed the Millerites? And what lessons could we take from that for the movement today? But well, we did spend a lot of time on Judges 17 to 21. Right, we did. And, and I think it's pretty much a message for this time. But is it a message for this time alone? Well, probably not, but... But we definitely could make an application of it, of, of the type of apostasy that happened in this movement. Okay. So I'm, I guess I'm, I'm getting at, since we're looking here at, at Judges 2.22 and 2.23, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Are we being shown a, a path 
that has already been taken with Judges 17 to 21. Right. So that's that's what I'm trying to say is that the 17 to 21 reflects this history in this movement. And now 22 and 23 are we have this test, right? Uh, right. That through them, I may prove or test Israel. So we are being tested by this God. Allowing. There's different views on how this really happens, but we know they don't drive out the nations, which which Joshua left when he died, right? Okay. And we're going to take here Joshua as being Jeff. So Jeff doesn't clear up all of these issues. And and now we're going to have 22 and 23, the years 22 and 23, which in which is this time in which we have to contend with this problem. So the question is, are we going to to drive them out? Because Joshua has left them. Right? Does that make sense? So no, I, I'm following what you're saying. Yeah. So this is this is what we're stuck with. We have these problems from the past of the enemies around us. They haven't been driven out. And we are being tested. That means we have to drive them out. And, and this is going to happen from the year 2022 to the year 2023. And this is the time frame which was given for Colin's prediction, right? Because okay. he's, he's dealing with November going all the way to the 11th of January, 2023. You know, and, and we don't know what's going to happen at this... Um, general conference session i mean if ted wilson isn't elected again i'm not sure what colin would do with his prediction because it's dependent upon ted wilson being reelected or being chosen again so that he's going to stay on and, and it's very likely that he may stay on um so so we're still going to have to contend with all of this all the way into 2023 of this mixture of, of Bible study. And then we're going to have to, as, as a movement, sort through it when, because things are so, sort of delayed because of Colin's prediction. It puts things on hold as far as this movement addressing the enemies. Right, that haven't been driven out. Like that is, and these enemies is are also internal right within each of us right because <clears throat> it has to start within the house of god the situation though is that the movement is the foundation of the building blocks of the house of god constructed without hands mm -hmm. But or to me, that, this all fits, you know, so it's, it, um, you know, maybe not exactly each verse, exactly each year. But it definitely outlines that period of time. Agreed. From 9-11 to the time we're in. Anybody else have thoughts on what we're discussing? Anybody think that we're completely out to lunch? Do people just have to think about it more before they have any thoughts? Well, I can certainly see that uh, in Judges 2, 22 and 23, yes, we are, are being tested. I just mm -hmm. wish that we'd all hurry up and learn, learn the lessons that Christ is trying to teach us so we can move on. Yeah, that's a difficult thing, though. We sometimes have I know. to... 
<laughs> we have to have our backs our backs against the wall. We have to sort of be forced into these corners where we then fight our way out. So Okay, let's, since there has not been any other comments, let's go back. We're going to take these verses kind of as, as a step-by-step -step and then see what else we can unpack from this. I'm not disagreeing. I believe that, that you've got a valid point for us to consider here. So... As this is describing what was occurring at that time, I think we have other applications that we will see from this. Well, we can at least agree, agree that Judges 2 verse 1 is a parallel to 9-11. I, I'm in agreement with you on that in, you know, very completely. Yeah. So... What I'm, what I'm saying here is that we're going to take these verses, mm -hmm. make the application that you just made, but we're going to take it step by step with some of the other verses that the translator had used and see if we can't place this even more firmly on a, a completed foundation. Okay. So, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Now, in 2011, after the Oklahoma camp meeting, after the battles that are going on with all the different ministries, there is no real unity within the movement. Correct. And, and I was in 2011, I did go to um, the camp meeting in Oregon that uh, Emiliano put on. Right. Um, there was a few different people here that were there. There was that, that black young preacher from Tennessee. I can't think of his name. A um, little bit fanatical. Um, and there was uh, um, uh, I don't think Jamal was there. But we did have um, Dario Taylor was there. Right. Um, also, Ty Gibson showed up at that camp meeting uh, to check it out, mostly just so he could find ammunition to uh, shoot it down. Um, but, it, you know, it was um, – so 2011, we know that there is this division in the movement that's just – brought. It's broiling under the surface, or boiling under the surface, however that is. Um, now, we also are going to have 2012, so that's going to be Parminder. That's the time setting. Where he that's, produced, that, yeah. that's Parminder coming in and beginning to present to the wider group. Yeah. Well, first he's just in Wales and he does this presentation. So I know he has connections with Tabo at that time. Tabo's part of his secret um, Bible study group, but just Tabo's connected through this email, right? So he gets the videos of their studies and, and so forth. But he's not sharing that with me, even though he's living with me. Now, isn't Mark Bruce in this in this time period as well? No. He's later? Yeah. So Mark Bruce is going to be 2014. Okay. Um, whether he sh shows up in 2013, I know in, by 2014 he's there. And he comes to the Alberta camp meeting uh, in 2014, the one where I presented uh, the chronology. So he's there um, at that time. Okay, now... When Israel is choosing to serve Balaam, basically this is the same as 
the Phoenician deity Baal, correct? Um, or is, is this a, a different description in the Hebrew? Well, the thing about Baal, it, it, it would be, yeah, the, it's the, it, it just means Lord. And so it's just a, another language for the name Lord. So Baalim or Baal, these are just these gods, these lords. So they can refer to the Phoenician or um, gods, but they can also refer to other types of gods. Okay. So ones in the Canaanite gods as well. But this is this is a plural, right? Yeah, just yeah. So the gods. Okay. The gods are the lords, right? But this does this not English. give a good does this not give a good description of what was happening within the movement at that time because you wind up with multiple speakers, multiple voices, and very soon you get to see that there are multiple directions of what's going on. Right, yeah. People are definitely pulling in different directions. Okay. So the application of this being typologically similar to 2011 would be correct. Mm -hmm. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at this portion of it, when they're saying they forsook the Lord, mm -hmm. we come to Deuteronomy 31.16, and the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant that I have made with them. And we also follow that back with Deuteronomy 6.14. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. And the final for this portion is thou shall not bow down them, thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the warnings are being given, yet the people here are choosing to follow after others, other speakers, we could say. Mm -hmm. We've seen what happened with Emilia. The same thing is currently happening with those that were intensely close to him, such as the Khoi's. Mm -hmm. They're going in a different direction, but it's a direction that is not within the movement. I mean, Emiliano, when he chose to leave, his first steps were taken before he had ever given the presentation of Ezra 7, verse 9. Yeah. It was almost like, here is this presentation. I'm handing it to you. There's nothing I can do with it. Do with it as you will. Yeah, because they don't really develop it. No. Emiliano or even any of the people who leave in 2014. Uh, the only person who kind of tried to do something with it was, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 
Oh, I can't think of his name. Ooh. Is it Leroy? Um, is there anybody with, or what's his name? Can't think of it. Um, but anyway, there was a guy who, uh, who still kind of used some of this stuff he would be following. He, he lived in, in Oregon, I believe. Okay. Um, I just, I'm so I always have a hard time remembering his name, but, but anyway, there were some people doing some things with it. They were using Ezra seven, nine, but generally th this was kind of ignored because it really didn't fit into what they were doing. And, and it, and it, and, and the fact that these ministries sort of dissolved, um, you know, I, I don't understand what they were thinking, what they thought they were going to accomplish, but you know, that's just looking back retrospectively. But anyway, tying this to, uh, to 2014 to Judges 214, I mean, the spoilers definitely, uh, we could see these people as the spoilers being delivered, that the movement was delivered into the hand of spoilers that spoiled them. Well, I was going, you know, as we're going through this, before we get to 214, we have this verse that says, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Yeah. Now, to me, this is always pointed toward what we saw with Elijah. Okay. Because there they they served Baal and the priests of the grove. Yeah, which is Astaroth. Yeah. Right. So we're seeing the seeds here of what came out in Germany. Yeah. I mean, Germany was was the revelation of the full grown plant. But we have these seeds where they are now forsaking God and they're choosing to serve Baal and Ashtaroth, the priests of Baal, Baal, the priests of the grove, those that would be joined with Jezebel at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, Here again, we have Judges 3, 7, 10, 6, and then Psalms 106 that are used by the translators. Because Judges 3, 7, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God, and they served Balaam and the groves. So that's supportive of, of yeah. this example. Yeah, the groves again is Ashtaroth. Right. That's just translated as groves instead of Ashtaroth. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. And in Psalms 106, 36 notes, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. So in this, in this situation, we have those that are going to give a message that is going to be pleasing to many characters. It's going to be pleasing to those that don't wish to see their soul temples prepared for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to 2.14, with the, with the change of thought, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. 
since we have the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, is this a doubling or is this a repeat? What? How should we look at this? Um, well, I mean, one is a noun and the other is a verb, but even in the Hebrew. Um, so, but it is, is a type of doubling. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. Sold conveys a word picture of an exchange. So how would this economic exchange have taken place? Okay. Um... Well, I mean, God does this, right? So this Correct. is the anger of the Lord. Um, so how did, if you're looking at the literal sense, how did God sell them into the hands of their enemies roundabout? Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it might just be sort of an idiom. So is it a literal or is it a figurative? It's figurative. Okay. So as you're looking at this, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, the, the verses that you are used to support that start with Judges 3.8. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushran Rishtham, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served that king eight years. Then we have psalms 106 40 therefore the wrath of the lord was kindled against his people insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance and he gave them into the hands of the heathen that they that hated them ruled over them their enemies also oppressed them and they were brought unto into subjection under their hand So we look at these situations. The verses that are being, being used here are saying that the Lord hated his own inheritance. Now, in this, in this figurative example, The Lord is not coming down to these nations to say, here's Israel, take them, do what you want with them. But he is certainly allowing Israel to experience what it means to serve these other gods. Are we going to see this same situation from those that have been in the movement and that have been in the church when at the very end they get to see what it is to have accepted spiritual formation and they get to see what it is to have followed after let's say Parminder and Tess or some of these others that chose not to give up their, their personal idols and chose not to surrender these to be restored unto God. Isn't that what's being represented by being delivered into the hands of the spoilers that have spoiled them? Mm -hmm. what hebrew word is being used here as spoilers just out of curiosity okay um well 
Well, I mean, it's the word shash, shasa. Shasa. Um, it's, this word shows up in uh, other places, of course. Uh, um, so this word is a common word used for spoil. Um, right, so just, um, and it means rob, obviously, can refer to destroyers. And, and if we look at the word, so that's, uh, which one, that's one. So that's the spoilers. And then, of course, you have the verb, shasas, which um, means spoiled. So, but, okay, if, if I was to go to 1 Samuel 23, verse 1. Okay, 1 Samuel 23, verse 1. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kela, and they rob the threshing floors. Yeah, so, yeah, there, that's the same word. Okay, so are we then comparing this with the robbers of thy people? Yeah, that's, that's a different word. Um, so I'm saying compare. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just want to see what that word is. Um, which verse is that? In Daniel. Robbers of thy people has to be in the later portion of Daniel 11. Yeah, I know. I just can't find it quickly. Daniel 11, 30. 14. 14. Okay. Oh, 14. That's not, I was looking too much too late. Okay. Yeah, so that's just a different different word which refers more to a tyrant, a destroyer, ravenous, robber. It's the violence is what's um, being noted there. But aren't these spoilers, I mean, while, while they are not, let's say, as violent <laughs> as what we see in the book of Daniel, aren't these spoilers taking away from the children of Israel, that portion of their inheritance. Yeah. It, it's kind of interesting. I'll come back to that. Just in Daniel eleven fourteen, 14, uh, there's a word there that's not translated. And, and it's actually sons of the robbers. I don't know why they don't put that in there. Okay. But um, so when it says also the robbers of thy people, it should say the sons of the robbers of thy people which is kind of odd that they didn't translate that. Yeah, in, in Young's literal translation, and sons of the destroyers of thy peeper, people do lift themselves up to establish the vision. So, but yeah, in King James, they don't translate that word at all. Hmm. Okay. okay. Um, so, in, in this situation there, since you know, as as you've just looked at this, Daniel eleven fifteen. Fourteen. Fourteen, excuse yes. me. I went back in, I'm I'm just looking at this because that verse reads, and in those times there shall be many stand up against the king of the south, also the robbers of thy people, yet the, the marginal reading in the 1769 does give it as the children of robbers. Yeah, okay. Shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. 
And this is the vision that's concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation. Right, because that's the chazon. Okay. So at this point, could this Judges 2.14... Addressing that God delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of the enemies round about. Could this not be presenting in a very obscure way a threefold union? Hmm. Because when we're looking at this with Daniel 11, 14, we have the children of the robbers of thy people, which are the children of Rome, yeah. which could mean apostate Protestantism. Because are those not the children of the robbers? Oh, I see what you're saying. The Like the daughters of the woman yes. right okay well that's kind of interesting um i don't know the one thing i can say because remember we know the judges receives a partial fulfillment um or leviticus 26 re receives a partial fulfillment in the history of the judges but a more right. complete fulfillment in the captivity captivity of israel by assyria and judah by Babylon, um, that we can see that uh, this is Leviticus 26 that's being talked about. This is what God does as a punishment. And though it's not specifically mentioned here in Judges about them not allowing the land to rest, um, we would assume that if they're rebelling against God, they are not following the sabbatical laws, whether it's okay. referring to the seventh day Sabbath or or the the yearly Sabbath, we don't we don't have any details on that. But God is is giving this punishment as a corrective measure, and if we apply it to us now, we can see that it's a corrective measure as well for us. All these things that have happened. This movement since 2014 were meant to correct us. Right. So what I what I find interesting here in the application of Leviticus 26, whether soever they went out, which is to go to battle, isn't that also addressed within Leviticus 26? Yep. Yep. So when you go out to meet your enemies, you'll show, you know, one shall chase, well, in Deuteronomy, one shall chase, chase a thousand. And, um, in, if you're obeying God and, and, and then, uh, well, on your side and then the reverse, if, it, if you're disobeying God, right? So however you look at it, a thousand can be chased by one. So in this situation, we have the application of the seven times, whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil. In other words, he wasn't going to support them. This was not going to be a good outcome. This was going to be something that was going to create further consternation. Because as the verse continues, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. So that's again a reference to Leviticus 26. Correct. And so as we look at this portion again, we come and we find out that the translators were applying this to Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. Right. Now, so the other thing, just dealing with the history of what's happening in this movement at that time, so 2014, right. 2015, is, I mean, and, and, and you asked the question about Mark Bruce, and, and I'd have to think about it again. Um, 
if he was there in 2014 or 2015 and you know um because it might have been 2015 actually come to think of it so but but i don't i don't particularly remember when mark bruce came to alberta but i know mark bruce was involved in in this fallout that was happening with these other ministries because he would go to some of these meetings and report back to Jeff about what was being said. And a lot of what he was reporting to Jeff wasn't true. But Jeff trusted him. So he actually caused further division between these various ministries and Jeff by his work. Plus, there was also the jealousy regarding Mark Bruce. So some of these ministries are quite upset that Jeff was embracing this new person and rejecting them so that's why i think it was 2014 that mark bruce was involved um, and that he came to alberta it must have been 2015 that Dwayne dewey came uh, i'm trying to remember um i also know uh yeah i also remember parminder coming too but i'm not sure which year he came so I'm getting some of this mixed up. I'm going to have to go back over old videos and figure out who spoke when, but um, and old schedules. But uh, but the point is, it's in this history that we have this spoiling going on, this this failure of this movement to grow. So this movement is being um, attacked because of this alliance that we've made with this false worship and being sold into the hand of the enemies um if you look at the enemies as being to some degree uh the church this definitely what was happening in this movement at that time didn't help our cause in presenting anything to adventism right because there was so much fanaticism going on with these various groups and and the focus of the message you know, not that the 2520 isn't correct, but Jeff said in 2012 that the 2520 was a distraction. And, and what he meant by that is it was a distraction from our main message, which was Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. And that it had created this, this opposition to the message, which we hadn't really experienced before. Because talking about Daniel 11, 40 to 45, there wasn't anything that could ca capture the imagination of those that were opposed to Jeff, right? It, it, but 20, uh, 2520, um, it, it was like this, this phrase that all of a sudden could embody the fear of Adventists. You have a date or something. And they didn't need to know what anything was about. And, and Jeff was more attacked on the 2520 than he was ever attacked by anything else. Agreed. Yeah. So, so all of this that was happening, 2014, 2015, definitely was undermining um, this movement, and so that we could characterize as spoilers. All right. But God, but God allowed that to happen. He's the one that delivered us into the hands of the spoilers. It was because of our own stiff necks that we were delivered into the hands of the spoilers. Yeah, exactly. Brother Theodore? Yeah. I believe it was 2014. So I believe that's the first year I went to the um, Future for America um, camp meeting ahead at the School of Prophets. Which, which, which one, in the spring or the fall or summer? Um, I'm thinking it's probably... It's probably in the fall. Okay. So the one where I was at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was at the one in the fall. Yeah. In October. Yeah, because I remember Mark Bruce, um, especially being there during that time. Yeah. Mark Bruce was there in 2014. Yeah. So, all right. I just thought I'd let you know that. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you. 
So as we continue here, nevertheless, the, the Lord raised up judges, which saved them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. So we have delivered and we have saved as being two adjectives, two action words. So by 2016, judges are being raised up. Now, in this situation, the judges that are being raised are the ones that are going to bring a, a clarified message. They're going to be offering a, not a peace and safety message, but a message giving direction to the old paths. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges. But they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. So I'm not saying I'm one of the judges, but back in 2016, what we had is this, this controversy that arose. So in the spring of 2016, uh, there was a camp meeting in Alberta. It was a, a convocation. It was just a weekend camp meeting. And that's where Par Parminder presented his views on um, uh, steps to Christ, that it represented these steps um, that could be marked as way marks. And, and he was also marking 9-11 as baptism and that the church, that we don't sin after we're baptized. And, and he was also presenting um, the message regarding um, that many people were objecting to uh, about um, the wheat and the tares. So I don't know if people remember that, that we need to remove the tares. So there was a number of these messages that he started presenting in 2016. And I had been a bit marginalized in 2015 at the camp meeting in the fall, which I didn't go to in Arkansas. Um, I had put out a paper entitled um, Why There's Not a 25-20 Year of Continual Punishment for, Levitic for Literal Israel Found in Leviticus 26 or something to that effect, a long title. Um, that I'd written for the elders of my church. And, and this was being spread around and there was a lot of opposition. Kelly Ross was at that camp meeting and uh, people were really, really upset with me. And he said, well, have you talked to Theodore? And nobody did. Um, they, just, they just out and out condemned me. Um, in 2016, and a lot of these people were from uh, Alabama. So in 2016, when Stephen and I were at the School of the Prophets. Uh, we ended up going uh, to Alabama um, to present. We went along with, with Michael. And uh, well, Stephen didn't present, but Michael and I did. We presented on the 70 years. And it seems at least the message that was being given, that we were presenting uh, to the movement, if it had been accepted, would have been a stabilizing message. It could have pre prevented uh, the movement from further uh, dissolution. But that message wasn't really accepted. The camp meeting in 2016 in the fall was the largest that Future for America had ever had. And um, yet at that camp meeting, there was so much disaffection and um, that was going on. And, and pretty much by the end of the camp meeting, many of the people who were there wanted nothing to do with the movement. So, so there was a lot going on at this time. But there was also this covert attack against what I was doing with chronology. Um, 
That is, there was uh, an undermining of my character by Tabo because we had had this meeting and in 2016. So we ended up at the School of the Prophets because uh, Jeff had invited us to go there, Heidi and I. And, and what had happened is this after this convocation in the spring in Alberta, uh, the next day, uh, Jeff Tabo, Kelly Ross, and myself had a meeting. And uh, there's a long story behind it, but basically it was to try to reconcile Tabo and myself because um, Jeff had had written me before uh, asking about uh, Tabo's character because Tabo had lived with me. And I, I gave Jeff a long letter explaining some of the problems I saw with Tabo and his behavior. And Jeff had taken out all basically all my adjectives uh, describing Tabo, put them in an email and sent them to Tabo. So Tabo was really upset with me. And so Jeff was, you know, having this meeting so that we could sort of talk this over. Uh, but that damage in my relationship with Tabo, which was always rather fragile, was never repaired. So as time went on, anything that I was doing uh, was seen by Tabo in quite a different light. And he was presenting that to others, such as Parminder and Jeff and Bronwyn and all these different people. Um, and so I kept hearing these reports about myself and what I was teaching, and I constantly had to fight against it. So in 2016, when Jeff invited me, he actually had me present. I'd written, um, or I had a meeting with him as well by myself where I went over all the supposed errors that I was teaching. And he had me present on four gen the four generations was one of the things that he had me present on at the School of the Prophets in an afternoon, Sabbath afternoon presentation. So, so I think that God was giving this movement an opportunity to, um, to look at things differently, not so much, you know, that I'm presenting something that's so wonderful, but just in how we are interacting with each other. Because part of the problem that we really had was not as much theological as, as character. Things should have been done openly. When people had problems with the brother, you need to write them or talk to them personally and find out where they're coming from, not continue to attack them in front of others. So, so this is a problem that had existed in this movement. And, and, and so, so it's not so much even about the message as about how we are treating one another as we're seeking to uncover truth. And, and we can see that this, this wasn't ultimately followed by this movement. That instead of studying together, as God had called us to do, we were working territorially. <clears throat> Define that a little bit better, please. Territorially. Okay. Well, people are fighting over over territory, right? It's it's there's the jealousies that arise because it's not so much what somebody else is saying, but it's the fact that you're not saying it, or or they're cutting into your time at meetings, or people are listening to you when they want them to listen to them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's this party spirit, this fighting for supremacy what we see with the disciples you know who's the greatest and that's really what i saw happening in the movement um i mean sure there are the theological issues that arise because of that but i don't think they're the cause of it necessarily i think the real cause is this this human pride our characters that are unconverted and they manifest themselves in these various types of schisms would you agree that this is still going on within the movement today? Yeah, so we definitely see it going on. That's what has to be resolved in this movement. It, you know, because people can be right and people can be wrong. I mean, I can be right and wrong. Other people can be right and wrong. Right, because we're not, we don't know everything. 
But the thing is, are we able to be corrected? And if we're going to be corrected, what is the means that God has given for correction? Are we able to be corrected or are we to be corrected? Well, yeah, to me, they're kind of the same. But yeah, people are unwilling to be corrected. But, uh, but you know, we put ourselves in that situation because of, because of our characters. So, yeah, so we see in, in verse 18, it says that again that the Lord raised up judges. So right. we see this in 2016, and we see this in 2018 again. Right. So in 2018, in a sense, much more markedly, um, because what ends up happening is Parminder and Tess, well, Tess particularly, is presenting July, or, or not July 18th, November 9th, right? Right. This is going to be witnessed by Stephen, because he, he actually finds November 9th, 2019, independently of anything Tess is doing. It's going to be witnessed by uh, Daniel from Brazil in in how he looks at, you know, he predicts October 13th. And then it's going to be witnessed by uh, the prophecies of uh, Ezekiel, right, dealing with the 391 and a half, and also by the prophecies of Revelation 9. And that's going to give us this, this date of July 18th. But this is going to be rejected. So the movement has had this opportunity to once again go back to the proper not just the proper method of Bible study, because that's part of it, but how we relate to each other. But instead of addressing these things in a discussion, they a papal spirit arises. Right? People are just shut down, which we're going to see in 2019. But that was happening covertly in 2018. That is, there was no reason given why... Um, I mean, and, and any of the information that, that Jeff had made regarding me was all just gossip and rumors that were unconfirmed. Well, well they weren't true. So, so, so we had this whole situation where instead of doing everything openly, decently, and in order, things were being done in closed door meetings. Things were being done covertly. And, and so what we end up happening in 2019, uh, you see, the, when the judge was dead, which, which I'm taking as referring to Jeff, even though there's other people involved, we're going to see what happens in Germany. Right. So, so, so now you can go back and sort of look at these verses because there's lots of different references here. Well, okay. When we're when we were looking at this with Judges two seventeen, yeah, and yet they would not hearken unto the judges. We had many situations by two thousand seventeen mm -hmm. where there are those within the movement that chose to go in different directions. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that in this area because there is a split with people that that are over on the other side of the state um I'm trying to remember the name of the of the little city um eatonville yeah eatonville yeah okay and in eatonville i was there in 2017 twice okay but those that are over and have been at Eatonville are not in full agreement with a lot of the things that Jeff had had to say. Yeah, there's there's some there at Eatonville. There's that, a few. Yeah. And then when we look at this in 2018, and when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge. So the way this verse is being translated, when the Lord raised them up, judges, plural, right, 
then the Lord was with the judge singular mm -hmm. and delivered them out of the hand of the enemies all the days of the judge singular. So I'm not disagreeing. Here is Elder Jeff with a representation on this end. Mm -hmm. I don't see Parminder and Tess being judges. No, that's what I'm saying. They're not. They're the ones that are in rebellion. Right. So, because yeah, in 2017, uh, you know, so 2017 is a very interesting year for this movement because it's it's when we organize. Now we had the elders picked in 2016, but they're going to have this camp meeting in Italy in 2017 to begin this work of organization. Well. Specifically, they actually do their first organizational camp meeting um, in September of 2017. And that's why I'm at the School of the Prophets teaching classes, because basically the teachers are gone. So I'm, I'm there presenting biblical chronology uh, from September 11th to September 22nd, um, if I remember correctly. But anyway, um, so we have this uh, this camp meeting going on, or not camp meeting, School of the Prophets in the fall. And then we have the camp meeting, the organizational camp meeting in wherever it was. Was that Romania, I think? Yes. Okay, Romania. Yeah. I always think Germany, but then Stephen corrects me. So, um, so we have that happening in 2017. But I'm also presenting Samuel Snow's letters. Right. So on September 23rd, 2017, I'm going to present at Lambert Church that July 18th is a symbol of the prediction before midnight. And and there's this whole issue going on about this prediction before midnight about Samuel Snow's letters, which started back in the spring of 2017 and had been unfolding through that summer. So um, so 2017 has all of these events, but at the end of it, you know, we get this amazing light on Samuel Snow's letters that's not accepted. But Jeff does accept it in 2018. It took him about a year almost before he saw the light on Samuel Snow's letters. So when he comes up to Alberta uh, in August of 2018, he's actually presenting Samuel Snow's letters. And, and yet there's still this which Jeff isn't aware of, there's a real opposition to any of this stuff dealing with this chronology, with Samuel Snow's letters, with Ezekiel, uh, with Revelation uh, chapter 9. All these things have, the, and Jeff's unaware of this. So all of this opposition is happening. So when we get the, the, the confirmation in 2018, for this November 9th, and then the addition of July 18th. Uh, Jeff becomes defeated by this. He's pretty discouraged um, in November of 2018 because all these things that he's been presenting and that he saw light in, the movement, the leadership of the movement, which now really isn't him, has rejected it. And he doesn't really know what to do. And, and his decision ultimately in 2019 is he's going to retire, right? So when it says the judge was dead, I think that refers specifically to Jeff. Well, you would have a, a type of a confirmation coming from Parminder at that point, because mm -hmm. didn't they come out in 2019 and basically say, that you should not listen to the words of Elder Jeff because he is dead. Yep. Yep. So that's what happens. So there's quite a bit here for us yet to consider. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a couple of minutes left in the session for today. To pose this question, is 
is this line of thought logical to others that are attending in this meeting right now? Are you having any problem with, what, with, with what's being presented? Or is this making sense so that as we then continue and finish this chapter and then go on to chapter three, that we could place this to a line to provide a structure for what we're going to be looking at from chapter three on. Okay, William, you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I, I can see it. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I think you know that since I wasn't involved, this is Chris, that yeah. uh, I've been uh, just listening, trying to understand. And I understand. There are times, though, that you have some very pointed and necessary comments and they are appreciated mm -hmm. i think uh, it'd be it's kind of interesting just to consider there are some things which seem to fit okay um then other things it's a bit uh, subjective yeah um, well, yeah I'm not disagreeing, Stephen, but there's there's a lot of this that as it's as it is being placed is beginning to give us more of a structure so that we would be able to understand some of the lines for what we were addressing out of the book of Joshua and what we're addressing right now at the very beginning here of Judges. Yeah. The, the one thing I can say is that, you know, some of these verses definitely match the year. Right. Right. Others are, you know, sort of general, but it's, it's more the pivotal years here that we see in the movement that I think are important. Um, you know, dealing back with, you know, verse one, of course. And, and then we can see when we studied the foundations of this message, examining the foundation series. Uh, we could definitely see the change that happened in 2006. Um, because this is the time when you're really starting to get the understanding of 9-11. And you're starting to have these people coming into the movement. Uh, these, and and that as that starts to unfold, you get finally uh, where, where I get to, to verse 10 that being the camp meeting in Oklahoma. Uh, to me, that's this generation that arises after them. That's really where we see all of these different mini ministries come into prominence in the movement, but they quickly want to assert themselves or establish themselves in the movement, especially financially. There's right. a jealousy going on towards the money going to Jeff. This was expressed to me by these leaders in the movement, some of them. Specific, specifically, Jamal was pretty upset about it. But one other one, I can't think who it was, um, mentioned it. You know, that the money shouldn't be all going to Jeff, that these other ministries needed this money. And that was the other issue that came up in 2014 when Jeff... Um, said that we're not to do public evangelism. A lot of these these ministries, they were really churches. And in order for them to grow, they needed to get new members. And they used public evangelism to do so. So to them, it was like Jeff saying, well, you know, you're not going to be getting any more members. You're not going to be getting any more money. So that was the other issue that, that arose there as well. So you, you can see some of these verses d definitely match the year. 2014, 2016, 17, 18, 19, you know, which is where we've basically got to so far. 
Um, and, and I think it, it's definitely profitable. It helps us understand a little bit more about our history and to put it in a framework here, which we had already put it in this framework. We just didn't match it with the verses in the year. Okay. Right. Okay, so we're going to return to this tomorrow. And begin to complete our conversation here about Judges chapter two. So any other comments at this time? Well, I had made a comment in the chat on uh, jo uh, Judges 2.13. I don't know if that has any bearing on what we're talking about, but I think it might. Well, let's look at that then when we start the meeting, all right? Okay. All right. So shall we close with prayer? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meeting that we have had. We thank you for this examination of this portion of the book of Judges. I thank you for the comments for the participation and the way in which you are leading. Direct us now through this day, help us to understand that which you would have us to do. Be with us through this day and may your character be revealed to all with whom we come in contact. For this we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.